Hey friends, it's Cherie, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the things that are going on in my sewing room today. I'm also going to be sharing with you some plans that I have for the next few weeks, and also a little information about just what I've been up to. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. <music> I am so excited to share with you that I finally received my issue of Sewn Magazine for February. For those of you who have been following me for a while, I mentioned a few months ago that I would be in the February issue of Sewn Magazine. This is my second time being featured in the magazine and this particular issue was very special because it's the iconic issue. And so a group of sewists were selected to recreate iconic looks and I was one of them, so I was really excited to do that. And let me tell you, the inspiration that I got from reading this magazine and just seeing some of the amazing looks that people recreated, it just blew my mind, okay? I was so excited to see what everybody was able to create. I'll give you a little peek of what my pages look like, but friends, if you got this issue, then you can definitely identify with the fact that there are some really talented people out here in the sewing community. So this is my issue and as you can see I recreated a Sade look. Now when they asked me if I wanted to participate in this particular issue I was very excited and I knew right away that I wanted to recreate a Sade look. First of all she's very classic and cool in my opinion. All of her looks just look so effortless and just gorgeous. And I definitely wanted to channel some of that in my life and in my wardrobe. So I was really excited to create this look. Also denim is really hot and I thought a denim on denim look would be really fun to make. So I recreated her Levi's look and I made my own button up shirt hacking a style sew me pattern. And I also made another pair of Morgan jeans to go along with that top. So I have my little Canadian tuxedo uh, outfit here and I love the way it came out. I definitely think that some of the looks in this magazine were just incredible. Um, I wanna show you one in particular. Look at this. So this is Tracy Ellis Ross in the corner and then look at her outfit that she made. Guys, people are so talented out here in these streets, okay? <laughs> I was definitely impressed with quite a few of the looks in this magazine. If you were able to pick it up, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And for those of you who purchased the issue because I will be featured in it, thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get into it. I have a list of things here that I want to share with you and I'm really hoping that I can get through all of those things before I have to take off to my son's baseball game. Um, so I'm going to be talking fast, so forgive me if my words come out weird <laughs> and bear with me. I'm definitely going to do my best. I just have so many things to share with you and my mind is racing a mile a minute. I made a list, but I'm sure there's things on here that I wanted to share with you that didn't make it to the list that I'll think about later and I'll be like, oh, I should have told them. So <laughs> anyways, let's get started. Um, I received my Indie Stitch box for the month of March. And it's a good one. I already took a peek. I'm gonna quickly share with you what came in the box. If you are unfamiliar with Indie Stitch, Indie Stitch is a monthly sewing subscription where you receive a pattern, fabric to complete the pattern, and all the sewing notions that you need in order to sew up that pattern, as well as some additional sewing goodies. Now, I have been partnered with Indie Stitch in the past, so I'm excited to be able to share their products on my channel again. If you're interested, there's a link in the information section of this video so that you can go ahead and check them out and subscribe to your own subscription um, for Indie Stitch. Also, I have a playlist that I've created of the other Indie Stitch unboxing videos that I've shared in the past. Okay, let's get into this box so that you can see what I received. So the pattern in this box is the Sawyer Sleep Dress and this is what it looks like. It is a really relaxed, comfortable, cute, soft knit sleep dress. And to be perfectly honest, I'm just gonna rename this my house dress because that's what I plan to do. I plan to make this dress and live in it all day in my house, okay? It's not just gonna be for sleeping. But it is a very nice looking pattern and it is by Petite Stitchery. And the cool thing about Indie Stitch is that for all of their boxes, they have a really awesome sewing tutorial. So you can scan the barcode and it'll take you directly to the sewing tutorial for the pattern that's in the box. Um, 
in addition to receiving the paper copy of the pattern in the box, you also have access to a PDF download of the pattern as well as the instructions that way. And you also receive all of the fabric that you need to complete the project. And for me, I chose this really gorgeous rib knit fabric. This is 87% polyester, 13% spandex, and it is 2.75 yards of fabric. It's absolutely stunning. I love green. And it was one of the colors that I wanted to increase in my wardrobe. So this is what the fabric looks like up close. A really beautiful, thick rib knit fabric. It's very soft. It's very stretchy. Um, and I think it's just going to make such a wonderful sleep slash house dress. It's so nice and soft and drapey. And the color is fantastic. I think it might be coming off a bit brighter on the camera than it is in real life but it is just such a gorgeous green colored fabric and i cannot wait to make my sleep dress slash house dress out of this fabric it's fantastic it's beautiful i will say this all the cuts of fabric that i have received from andy stitch over the several um, boxes that i've opened up here on my channel have been really nice quality fabrics and i actually haven't seen anything like this in my local fabric stores so i'm really excited to be able to sew this up the next thing in the box is the thread that goes along with the fabric and it is a perfect match and also it comes with two ballpoint needles in this little envelope so that's really nice that it comes with two needles because if you break one you have another one for backup i love that and then the next thing in the box is something that we all need friends and this is i believe a chalk pen this is a retractable chalk pencil. This is what it looks like. And this is going to be such a handy tool in my sewing room. I tell you what, I have been using those heat erasable pins and I don't like those. I have decided I'm no longer gonna use them because on dark fabrics, sometimes when you iron the pin marking, and it fades away it leaves behind a white line and it does not wash out so be careful with those heat erasable pins i much prefer a chalk pencil like this so love this as something added in the box on this card it does tell you everything that's in the box so i'm kind of referring back to it as i pick things out and then in this box here we have some sewing clips and i'll show you what those look like just typical sewing clips so if you don't have any in your stash, this is a really nice thing to be added in the box. There's also a snack, and it's actually a pretty hearty snack. It's trail mix, so that's nice. So if you need a little snack while you're sewing, this is a nice little treat to have in the box. And then lastly, here's the printed pattern. And I like the way this is printed because all of the sizes are actually printed in color which is extremely helpful because if you are a person who struggles with tracing off your patterns because you accidentally pick up the next size over, you won't have to worry about that. You can figure out what your size is and what color it is and just stick to tracing that color. I love that. This is also really good, sturdy, thick paper that is nice for tracing off and reusing over and over again or if you know your size, you can just cut it right out. So those are all the things that were in this month's Indie Stitch Box. If you're interested in receiving your own Indie Stitch Box, then the link will be in the information section below. I highly recommend sewing subscriptions if you are a person who wants to practice sewing different types of fabric, if you just like a little surprise in the mail every month, and also if you'd like to be introduced to some new sewing patterns to you. Sometimes there are pattern companies out there that are not as publicized as the those main ones that we see all the time. So this is a great way to learn about some other really cool indie sewing pattern companies out there. So that's everything that was in my box. Let's move on to the next thing. The next thing I want to share with you is some patterns that I picked up. And before you go judging me, <laughs> because I did say that I wanted to spend less money on patterns and really look at my pattern stash. And if there's something similar to what I want to buy that I could hack in my stash already, not purchase it, Slow your roll, it's okay, I promise. I actually did a pattern swap at the BHM live event. So I actually picked these up from other sewists that donated them in the pattern exchange. So 
that's where I'm starting. And then there were some things that were actually gifted to me at the actual event in the goodie bags. So I'll share those with you. I did purchase a few patterns that were very inexpensive on sale and they're fantastic. <laughs> I'm so excited about them. Um, and we'll get into those as well. So first we'll talk about the patterns that I picked up that used to belong to other sewists. Thank you so much if you donated these patterns, okay? Um, the first one is McCall M6612. I love this knit dress. I love the fact that it has a long version with a cowl neck and that is the version that I was drawn to. However, all of these versions are very cute. I like that this looks like a pretty simple sew and um, that it really only requires elastic as a notion. So they should be pretty basic and easy. The recommendations for this guy are jersey, cotton knit, sweater knit and interlock. So I really love this pattern and I'm happy to add it to my stash. I definitely think that this is something that I would wear all year round. So that was one. The next pattern is actually a pant pattern. If you didn't know this, I'm on a pant making journey. I'm definitely trying to figure out this body of mine and I've been enjoying making all the different types of pants. So this is McCall's 9184. It's a fashion basics pattern and it looks to be pretty old. So the copyright on this guy is 1998, which is the year before I graduated high school. And while this pattern is an older pattern, if you look at the styles of the pants, I would say that all of these styles could absolutely be worn today and I've definitely seen them. I love the version that has the pleating on the front. That's really gorgeous. I love the wide leg, straight leg, or with a cuff versions of this pattern. I love the darts for shaping in the front and the back of these pants. It just looks like a fantastic pattern and I'm looking forward to sewing this up. I don't have a lot of suiting material, but this is one that I'll definitely hang on to for when I'm ready to try those different fabrics. In this particular one, um, it recommends cotton, cotton blends, midweight linens, um, gabardine, wool, chino, velveteen, flannel, lightweight corduroy, and wool. None of those really speak to me. <laughs> maybe, maybe the twill, um, and maybe I would definitely not make these out of linen just because I love the structure of them. But yeah, anyway, really lots, lots of options you can make these pants out of. And I think it's fantastic. If you hear noise in the background, it's my kids messing around. Please forgive that. The next pattern is a Vogue pattern. It is a denim pattern. I'm obsessed with making jeans. Okay. So some of my jeans I've shared on my channel, some I haven't. But I think that this is a really nice looking pair of jeans. You can make a skinny leg or you can make more of a boot leg. And I think it's really cute. I also like that there's a version on here that comes with a template for top stitching designs on the back pockets. That's kind of neat. I don't know if this is necessarily going to be uh, an easier pattern to sew, probably more on an intermediate level. But I love that it's lower on the on the waist. It's not a high-waisted pair of pants. Those are the type of pants that I'm really trying to steer away from. I want to be comfortable. So I like the way this sits on her body. Um, like her, I don't have a very big behind. Um, and my torso is kind of short. So I definitely am looking for a lower rise of pant. So anyways, I'm excited to give that a try. Now this pattern is one that I already own, but I sold the wrong size. So you guys have seen this on my channel. I want to say I made it back in September, M7406 McCall's. I made this version here. I love it, but it's way too small. I actually made, I believe a size 14 and I probably should have made a size 18. Um, and there's a few reasons why I should have done that. For one, the bust section of this dress uh, it didn't cover all the way over like it does on hers. I actually had to add snaps to keep the dress closed. Um, same thing with the waist tie, like the tie section is closer to her side of her hip. Mine was more towards the middle because I had a little bit of a fuller tummy area and that's partly because I was going through the hysterectomy situation and I was all bloated. Um, but even now having lost that weight, it still doesn't quite fit me perfectly. And there is some issues with the bust, the bodice part of the dress because my bust is fuller. So I saw this as one of the free patterns and I totally swooped on it because I do plan to make a size 18 or even make a 16 with a full bust adjustment. But regardless, it was such a great little dress and I'm still going to wear it. I usually wear it on top of something else, either a t-shirt or a turtleneck. Um, so anyways, I love this pattern. It's a good one. Now let's get into the bag patterns that I have. I've been really excited about 
going into bag making and at the BHM uh, pattern designers live event we were gifted some patterns but also I purchased a pattern okay one of the free patterns I picked up that I didn't share it was in the wrong stack is McCall's fashion accessories 3693 I got this pattern specifically for the duffel bag version. I don't have a duffel bag pattern in my stash and I thought it would be really neat to make a duffel bag. This is also something that I think would be kind of cool in African wax print on Cara fabric. So anyways, really cool pattern and it comes with several different views. So I was excited that someone was giving this away and I hope to make the duffel sometime soon. So these two patterns were included in the goodie bag that we received at the event. The first one is the Fiesta Tote, and these are by Sewing Patterns by, I think it's Marsh. I could be wrong, guys. It looks like Marsh. Uh, anyways, this is a really nice tote bag. It definitely is one that requires hardware that I do not have, which is kind of a bummer because when I saw these patterns, I got so excited and I was like, as soon as I get home, I'm gonna make a bag. But then I realized I didn't have any of the necessary hardware <laughs> to make these bags. So they are on hold until I can get all of the things that I need. But you need magnetic snaps, cap rivets, triangle D-rings, swivel clips. I don't know what in most of these things are. Like I definitely have some D-rings in my stash, but I don't have triangular ones. But all the other things I don't have and don't know where to buy. If you are a bag maker and you know a place that has affordable hardware for bags, let me know. But I can't wait to figure it out because I definitely want to make this bag. The next one is really cool and I absolutely want to make it. I absolutely need to figure out where to buy the hardware for this. This is the Bucket Tote. This is what it looks like. And the Bucket Tote actually requires rectangular rings small rivets, swivel hooks, and a dressmaker zipper and magnetic snaps. Um, I don't have any of that. <laughs> so uh, let me know where you guys buy your hardware for your bags, preferably affordable hardware, because I don't know that I'm gonna be one of those people that's gonna be making a ton of bags, so I don't wanna buy the huge variety kits. I just need enough for a couple of projects. So let me know, because this one especially is one that I've never seen a tote bag shaped like this. I just think it would be so cool. Again, an African wax print fabric would be really amazing. The last two little bags that I want to share with you that came as a gift are these awesome little cosmetic bags, and they are from Sew Your Bag, and they're absolutely adorable. And the package came like this. It has the zipper, it has the vinyl, and it has the cotton fabric to make the little cosmetic bag and I actually got two of them. I don't know if that was an accident, but it's a happy accident <laughs> to have received two. So I can make one for a family member and then keep one for myself maybe, but I think these are really great and I think it's awesome that you have access to the free pattern and um, if you've never made a bag before, this is a really great little introductory to making bags. So I was really excited to receive these in my goodie bag. So those are the things that came for free. And now I'm gonna show you what I purchased. So, so your bag was there. If you don't know about So Your Bag, check her out because she has some amazing goods. I actually purchased this. She does sell a kit where you can make this, but this is a wallet. And I am not there in my bag making journey to make my own wallet. So I was happy to support her by purchasing one that she created because first of all, it's stunning, okay? Now, while this is a wallet, I could absolutely see myself squeezing a little lipstick in there and just using it as a little clutch for a little dinner date. So fantastic, love that it has all these card slots. It has a money slot, it has the coin purse in the section in the, section in the middle. This really cool locking feature here on the front. Doesn't this just look gorgeous? And this is Ankara fabric, it's fantastic. I love the way this looks. It caught my eye immediately and I was like, are these just to show off your amazing skills or what the final result will look like if you buy the pattern or are these for sale? And she sold it to me. So I was really excited to purchase this wallet and I cannot wait to go on my next date so I can carry it. So I bought that from her. I also bought some bag kits. Um, she has an amazing bag and she actually featured it there at the live event, but also Natita sewed it up and she was carrying hers at the event. It is the Mamiti Market Tote. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'll put the spelling of it on the screen here. It's a really great tote. I'll also include a picture of what the pattern looks like so that you can see. Now, the cool thing about this particular tote is that she sells all the hardware in a hardware kit like this. This kit, I want to say was $25 and I got two. 
So hopefully I'll be making those bags really soon. The only challenge that I have with this particular pattern is that it requires vinyl and I am not really trying to buy vinyl right now. So I'm considering actually making that tote by using a heavy sturdy denim instead of vinyl. So if you've done that before, if you've made this tote and you've used something other than um, then vinyl, please let me know how it turned out. I also have, I believe, some faux leather in my stash. I need to double check to make sure that it is not a stretch faux leather, but I was thinking about using that as well. I don't know, I just, I really struggle with look, like I was looking at the prices for vinyl and things like that, and I was like, oh man, do I really wanna buy that? <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, the bag itself was absolutely gorgeous and I was really excited to be able to pick up the kits there so that I have everything I need and I can probably use fabric in my stash. But unlike these uh, tote bags that don't have hardware, I don't have to go hunting to find all the different pieces to make the bag. Everything's in one bag and I just thought that was very helpful and I'm so glad that she sold those at the event. Hey guys, forgive this crazy angle. I'm so sorry for the close up of my face. I'm editing in my car as I'm waiting for my son to finish batting practice and I'm realizing that I forgot to film the patterns that I purchased at a really discounted price. I mentioned them when I first started talking about patterns and then since I didn't print the patterns, I forgot to talk about them. Anyways, let's get into it, okay? So I actually saw that Vicky Sews patterns were on sale. So this is my first time ever purchasing from Vicky Sews. Um, as you know, they come in two different languages. I don't know what the other language is, but I definitely selected English, okay? And so the first pattern that I picked up is the Dural Trousers. I think that's how you say it. These particular trousers caught my attention because they are definitely a cargo style of pants. And everybody's into cargo right now, including myself. I have stopped myself from purchasing cargo pants and ready to wear every week for like the past two months, okay? I'm definitely interested in some cargo pants, but since I'm on this pant making journey and I really want to fit my body, I decided that I wanted to make some. Now, originally I was gonna hack some pant patterns that I have in my stash already. I thought that was the best way to go. However, this one has the pockets, it has all the cool features, it does have a drawstring ankle that I'm not really interested in so much, I probably leave that part out, but it has a really cool um, tie feature on the leg and I just think these are really nice looking um, pants. And to be honest, I don't often see patterns that are more street style, streetwear. And that's kind of how I dress normally. And so a lot of my pants are purchased because of that reason. If I saw more um, baggier fit styles of trousers and jeans, I'd be buying those patterns like crazy. But since I don't see them, I often will just buy them. So I was really excited to see these. And I definitely think that I can put my own little spin on it and make these. It has so many cool pocket features that I'm really thrilled about. Now on Vicky So's Instagram page, they posted a sneak peek of a project that they were working on. Those cargo pants were so dope. Like I wish I knew how to make those, but it has the, the pop out type of pockets with the zippers on them. I have been searching and searching for patterns that come with those pockets so that I could at least like steal the pockets from those other patterns. I don't have any in my stash, but I'm definitely searching. If you know of some cargo pant pockets that have those really cool pocket features, let me know. But I really think that this is a nice pair of pants and I cannot wait to wear these pants after I make them, of course. <laughs> okay, the next pair of pants that I got is the Jewel pants. Now, these pants are jeans and they have so many cool features. The back yoke piece on these jeans is really unique. On the front, the leg is split up into two pieces on each side and it gives kind of like a V shape at the crotch area. I think that's really cool. These jeans caught my attention in particular because I am very much into the Levi's uh, Low Pro jeans and pretty much any oversized jeans that I can get my hands on. And these very much remind me of the style of jeans that I've been purchasing lately. And so I definitely am excited to make these. They're very baggy and comfortable and cute. And you can make them in so many different fabrics. Both of these patterns that I just mentioned can be made out of denim, corduroy, uh, probably uh, canvas. Like there's lots of different things that you can use to make these pants. Definitely these are non-stretch fabric pattern patterns. So 
anyways i love the way these look i haven't seen too many versions of either of them on instagram so i don't know how it's going to turn out another thing that's interesting about vicky sews is that when you buy the patterns you're only buying one size and so i wasn't quite sure about my size because generally i have to grade between sizes but since both of these pants are oversized pant patterns i have a feeling that i'll be able to get away with the size that i purchased which is a size 44 which fits my full hip but the actual waist of this pattern was much smaller than my waist since these are low rise pants i'm really hoping that i won't have to worry about adjusting the waist to be wider but if i do it's okay these patterns were on sale for like five bucks you guys so i felt really good about buying them the jewel pants in particular are just really my style i just love the way these look they can be paired with so many different things and these are the type of pants that i would typically wear on the weekend or even for work love this pattern so much definitely has a 90s flair i love them the next pattern that i picked up is the jocelyn blouse which is a really wonderful button front tie blouse and it has a really large uh, collar which is really beautiful and it looks like it's supposed to be made from like silkier fabrics and so i definitely have some of my stash that could be used for this pattern and while you might be thinking that this is very similar to the helen's closet what was that top that i made i can't remember but i shared it during the summer vacation sewing series it is in the fact that it's cropped and that you tie but it. it's different and that the ties are much longer and flowy the collar is different it's not a camp style of shirt and also it has a really great uh, sleeve cuff. It's not like a wide flowy sleeve. So I really love the look of this blouse. I think it's very cute. It can be definitely paired with jeans as it is in the pattern example, but also I could see pairing this with some really nice slacks with a gorgeous skirt. I love this pattern and made out of a silky fabric. It would just be a knockout. So I'm excited that I picked that up. Now, while I was on the site, I noticed that they did have some free patterns. I definitely downloaded the Milana dress. It's a very cute little flirty dress. Now, will this fit my bust? I don't know. I will do all the things that I can in order to make it fit my bust, but I think it is a very cute, flirty, fun little dress that would be perfect for summer. If we go on any summer vacations, I could see myself going to dinner in this dress. It's so very cute. And I like that it has a tie feature in the back that would cover my bra band, but it has a little peekaboo at the lower back. And the ruffle, of course, at the neckline is just really cute. The last pattern that I want to share with you is the Vicky Sews sweatshirt Nikki. I like this a lot. It reminds me of the green style Sav sweatshirt, which I've made a few times, only it doesn't have the hem band and it doesn't have the wristbands. So it's just an easier sweatshirt to put together. And I like that it has extremely long sleeves because it's going to keep you nice and toasty. Okay. And anytime I find a free pattern that just looks like it would be easy and gorgeous, I definitely want to download it. So as you can see in the picture, it's paired with those jewel jeans. And that is an outfit that I would wear Monday through friday right there i love it i love it i love it i love it i said monday through friday girl you know i meant mon monday through sunday okay <laughs> all right so see you later bye there were some other freebies that came in the bag that we received and one of them is some little sewing clips i thought that was really nice there is a snag tool i do not know how to use this but it's so cool because it repairs knits and woven garments and it just looks like a needle so i'll have to really read the instructions on this guy to figure out how to use it but that was included i also have a wooden point turner i have several different point turners in my stash but i always use them so i'm happy to have another one and i also received this cool little tool this is a tailor's all Friends, I have heard about these and never seen one in real life and I'm so excited to actually have one. Um, and it says it's used to pierce holes in fabric like leather and collar points. So I have something that I use to do those things but it, they definitely don't look like this and this is really sleek and nice and it has a little wooden handle. So that was really nice to receive. Um, at the event, I won a random drawing during the necklace making class with Fat So Monica. And it is a gorgeous little wooden keychain and it says greetings from Ghana. So cute. And it's on the back it says greetings from Ghana, the land of gold. Really cute keychain. Love it. Um, at the event, I made a beautiful necklace in that class. So pretty. I also made an awesome flower, fabric flower. I took a class to learn how to do that. And I did that because I 
first of all, I wanted to sign up for all the classes just because I was so excited and I made the trip, so why not? But also, I thought it would be really nice to be able to learn how to do this to add to clothing. So I think it will be really fun to make some of these fabric flowers now that I know how and add them either to the neckline of a dress or maybe to the bottom tier of a dress. I don't know, but it was so much fun and a lot easier than I thought it would be. I definitely hope to make some fabric flowers in the future. That's everything that I picked up from the BHM Pattern Designers live event. Let's move on to what I've been working on, okay? Now, <laughs> I've been working on a lot, guys, because I can't sit still. I get bored really easily, and I'm always looking to jump to the next thing. So last night, I actually started a project with my embroidery machine. I haven't been using it as often as I want to be using it. It's just because I don't have enough time to play with all the things that I own, okay? <laughs> but I got it for Christmas, and so I pulled it out. I was actually going to do a project for my son, set up the whole thing for him, and then realized that he actually wanted heat transfer vinyl, not embroidery. So I was like, oh, I just set this all up. So I just went ahead and did some embroidery since it was set up. It wasn't a big deal, guys. It's not like there's a ton of pieces that I had to set up, but since I was set up, I thought I'd play around with it. So um, anyways, I am started a project. This is a sewist sweatshirt. I'm kind of disappointed at the size of the word sewist because I have a four by four hoop and this is the biggest that I could make it in the uh, in this particular font. So it's actually kind of small, but what I wanted to do is add a different little um, sewing knickknacks around the word sewist. So a pin cushion, some fancy little scissors, uh, maybe a, a needle with thread in it. I don't know. But so far I have a few spools of thread that I've added. It yeah. didn't take very long to create the spools of thread in the word sewist on this sweatshirt, but I was really tired last night and I make mistakes when I'm tired. So I decided to call it quits for the night and I will revisit this project in the future. So that's one thing that I've been working on. The next thing that I've been working on is I'm knitting a uh, scarf and this is how far I've gotten so far and I have a pretty significant problem I'm sure you can see it um, right here in the center there's a hole because I somehow skipped a stitch um, if you know how to fix that let me know otherwise I'm just gonna take yellow thread and I'm gonna sew it together and close up the hole that's what I'm gonna do because I'm not starting all the way over. I made some serious progress, guys. <laughs> this is where I am so far, and for me, it's a big deal because I am new to knitting and it is definitely not easy for me. Um, I am often all thumbs, and so when I'm able to sit down and actually focus and do this, um, I'm proud at all the little progress that I make at each turn. I wanna say that because I'm still new to this, it takes me about an hour to do that much which is terrible, but I can't tell you how many times I actually started this and had to undo it and start all over again. So this is definitely progress for me and I'm still working on it. Is it beautiful and perfect and gorgeous? No, but I'm having fun doing it and I'm teaching myself a new skill. So I'm trying to give myself some grace. Friends, if you're knitting scarves out there, tell me how long does it take for you to typically sew a full scarf? Is it like 15 hours? total like do you do it 30 minutes at a time like how how are you working your knitting projects okay because i don't want to have unrealistic expectations for myself and also i haven't been knitting every day it's kind of like i knitted on the airplane i knitted while the children were napping one day um just here and there i haven't actually carved out time to knit I'm sure I probably could have finished by now, but let me know guys, what's the average number of hours spent making a scarf? So those are the things that I've been working on. Let's transition to talking about what I plan to sew. So this weekend, hopefully, hopefully friends, I'm actually going to sew up this project I cut a year ago for my husband, and that's the Simplicity S9458. It is the jogger suit by Norris. And I actually cut out, cut out the pattern in the fabric a year ago to sew for him. I'm actually gonna do it now. He asked about it and his birthday is in a couple of days. So I'm definitely gonna finish this up. Hopefully it turns out really nicely and he'll be proud to wear it. And if it doesn't, at least I'll have finished it because this has been hanging over my head for a year <laughs> and I need to get it sewn up. So this is one thing that I'll be working on this weekend and hopefully before the weekend is over, but who knows. 
The next thing that I'll be sewing up this week is the array dress and I'm going to be making a longer version of this dress and I've already cut it out and I'm using that awesome red faux suede. Okay, so this dress, I actually need it to be done by Friday because I'm going to an event on Saturday and that's where I plan to wear this awesome dress. Please cross your fingers for me because I absolutely want to get this done. The next thing that I plan on sewing up is the McCall M8149. I have made two versions of this already because I love it so much. I have made view C and view B. I plan to make view C again, only this time instead of using denim, I will be using faux leather. And I have this really awesome faux leather here. And so I can't wait to make this skirt out of this faux leather. I think it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. And I don't anticipate any issues because I've sewn this up twice, but hey, you never know. Um, I do wear the skirts that I made previously quite often and I love this pattern. So I'm hoping to get this done so that I can wear it throughout spring. Lastly, I'll be sewing up my Elevate with Ankara garment. Please make sure that you watch that video. I am sharing the next garment in the series on Tuesday. So head over to my channel on Tuesday so that you know what the next garment in the series is. I've already selected my dress. I've already cut out the pieces. It's just waiting for me to sew it up. So I'm excited to sew that up. And also guys, I've decided to start a new craft as if I need a new craft. I know it's terrible the way my mind works, but I was talking to my friend Talisha and I'm obsessed with buttons. If you follow me on Instagram and you've seen this in the past, I will buy the big assortment of mixed buttons and part of my personal therapy is to sort those buttons into the same color and the same size. Um, something about sorting them, it just does, so, it's just good for my brain. <laughs> and I love buttons so much. Well, I've lately been extremely drawn to different types of buttons, like Pigeon Wishes buttons are gorgeous. Tab of the Sewers buttons are gorgeous. And my friend asked me why I didn't just make my own buttons. And she told me it would be easy and what I would need to do. So I fell down this rabbit hole of how to make buttons. And so I'm going to be making some buttons and I'll show you what I picked up in order to make these buttons. Don't judge me, don't come for me. I love crafting, I will do all the crafts, okay? <laughs> all right, let me show you first the buttons that kick this all off. I had talked about these buttons in my last video like this and these are the tap of the sewer buttons. They finally came and this is what they look like. Look how they sparkle, look how they twinkle. Aren't they so amazing? Love them, love them, love them. And then I also picked up this one which is just glitter and when I tell you these are gonna be probably the easiest ones to make and I had no idea that they would be the <laughs> easiest to make until I did some research. Um, I, I'm, I mean, I'm happy I bought them because they're gorgeous, but also I mean, when I realized how easily I could make them, I was just kicking myself a little bit, but now I know how, so I can make all the different colors and I'm so excited about that. So what I did is I purchased a couple of resin kits and I got this one, this is a UV resin and you use this with one of those UV lamps. I have one for nails and it's actually the perfect size. So I've ordered some little silicone button molds that were very inexpensive. I wanna say they were like $6. And um, this kit right here was $20. So very inexpensive to make your own clear buttons. But if you wanna add some razzle dazzle sparkle and fun, colors, then I'll show you what I purchased to make them fun and dazzly. But um, this kit is supposed to be pretty easy and straightforward, so I'm excited to try it. And also you'll have your buttons the same day, actually within seconds and minutes, actually. So I'm really excited to try UV resin. But I also got this kit here because I wasn't sure which effect I was gonna like more. This is the epoxy res resin. With epoxy resin, it takes uh, a full day in order for the buttons to completely um, get solid and hard and be finished. So you make your buttons today, they're ready tomorrow. But for someone who likes to sew and be creative with their wardrobe, I think it's actually a really good idea for me to take on this venture because I absolutely love buttons and I know what they can do to elevate looks. So I'm excited to be able to play with these two kits and I got small ones because I'm only one person making buttons for one person, right? But if it's something that I actually take to and I really enjoy, then I will buy the larger tubs of resin. 
I also got something that um, I didn't know I was going to need <laughs> and it's actually um, a mask which is special for using with resin and I was actually able to find one very inexpensive on Amazon so I'll be wearing a resin to help me out so that I don't have issues with the resin um, affecting my lungs and I plan to do it outside which means I was all juiced up and ready to actually make these buttons this weekend, but it's gonna be a rainy weekend, so I'm gonna have to wait until the weather improves so that I can do this outside wearing my mask. And because I have asthma, I don't mess around with chemicals much, so definitely wanna be safe when I'm making my buttons. Okay, so to make these buttons extra special and unique and cool, I got some different artsy things and I felt really good about picking these things up because I do lots of different crafts um, with my kids, in the classroom, for myself, and so I know they won't go to waste even if I don't continue to make buttons after I make my first several different ones. Hold that thought. So the first thing that I got is this wonderful assortment of glitters, if you could see that. These are all chunky glitters. And there's lots of different colors. Oh, that's probably the best way to show you. Lots of really cool colors of chunky glitter. And I'm really excited to do some special buttons using these glitters as well as use these for every other craft I can think of. I also got some epoxy resin color and this is actually alcohol based color. And you just add drops to the buttons and it gives it all the color that you need. And I'll tip it so you can see it's a nice little set. So I'll be able to make all my colorful buttons. I'm so excited about this. You guys, I, you have no idea how excited I am about this. It's ridiculous. Um, and then the last thing that I got to decorate the buttons is these awesome flakes. So this is gold and then I have blue and I have this gorgeous purple and I have silver and I have red and I have bronze or like copper. Really beautiful flakes that can be used for lots of different crafts but definitely gonna use these for buttons. And I picked the glitters and the flakes based off of the buttons that I have been drawn to when I'm shopping buttons. So that's why I chose to buy those. Um, the last thing that I'm gonna get back into is making pattern weights. I shared on my channel that I made donut pattern weights uh, a couple years ago, and I use them all the time. I love those pattern weights, they're amazing. Um, I do, however, wish they were slightly heavier, so this time around I'll be using heavier washes, and I've actually started this project, so it's actually something I probably should have shared earlier and what I'm working on. Um, but this is the box. I had to tape it up because the washers were so heavy that they broke out of the box when they were being shipped. So what I did is I took some super sturdy glue and I glued two washers together and these are actually two inch washers. Very heavy in weight so it's going to be perfect for weighing down my fabric. So I'm happy I got these and this is a box of 100 so once I glued them together then it was like 50 pattern weights that I can make and I know that's more pattern weights than what I need but I figured since I enjoyed making them so much last time I could probably make some for friends or even sell them so I, it's something I could add to my Etsy shop if I figure out exactly the design that I want to share um, so I got these pattern weights and then I also got these silicone molds and these can be used for food or they can be used for resin and I'm gonna be using them for resin they are a little over two inches wide and then they're um, about an inch thick. And so the idea is to make resin pattern weights with those weights in the bottom. And I also have this little mold, they're little roses. I think that would be really pretty to do a resin pattern weight. So I haven't seen too many of them out there. If you're into resin and you've made pattern weights before, let me know how the process went and what you used when you made yours. So I'm thinking about doing that. Otherwise, I definitely can still use my clay in order to make pattern weights because I still have a bit of clay left over from when I made my pattern weights before. So that's everything that I wanted to share with you in this video today. I hope it wasn't too much. I hope you enjoyed what I did share, but that's what's happening in my sewing room right now. I'm sewing, I'm crafting, I'm staying busy, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> no, I, I am sleeping, but I probably um, lose a lot of sleep over my mind racing, thinking about all the things that I want to do and make. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's what I'm up to. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I'm also going to link the video that I did that was similar to this uh, last month. And that way you can check out what I was up to last month. And I will be following up with you to share with you the progress that I've made on the things that I mentioned in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a wonderful day and a fantastic week. Bye.